been talking in extensively about the energy geotechnics which is a major upcoming area in the field of uh, civil engineering, geotechnical engineering and environmental geotechnics and this is where I have discussed in details about uh, the energy scenario and the related discussion and followed by the major challenge in the form of how to tackle the nuclear waste or the thermal power plant waste which is coming out and uh, how to deal with the situation. So in continuance with that, in today's discussion I will be talking about gas hydrate because many of you were discussing this in the previous lectures and what are the intricacies associated with the gas hydrates, it is a very advanced uh, topic of discussion, uh, very contemporary not many attempts have been made in our country particularly to introduce this subject as a as a course or maybe as a topic of discussion in the classroom but i thought that this is a good idea to maybe talk about such topics which are very contemporary and which give you a feel of what's happening internationally as well as in our country so gas hydrates basically they belong to a multi phase geomaterials in your third year soil mechanics course uh, you have modeled soil mass as a three phase system that is it contains air it contains water and it contains solid phase which is minerals skeleton now in real life situation uh, this type of three phase systems do not exist you know much and uh, to give you an example which we have discussed earlier also when we talk about the conventional geomechanics uh, these three phase very meticulously or cleverly we have converted into a two phase by saturating the samples before their test so we got rid of the air phase there and this is where mostly the tazagian geomechanics theories are related with a three phase system in real life would be a unsaturated soil, uh, it's difficult to handle in the laboratory with the conventional setups and uh, you have to use ultra modern devices to measure the suction or the amount of pore air pressure which is present in the soil and then redefine the constitutive laws or the relationships which Tazagi gave for a two phase system that is saturated soils. Now extending to this complexity is a multi phase geomaterial where uh, the solid phase remains intact, the liquid phase might be partially frozen and the gaseous phase might be present in the frozen material or in the liquid material. So, this is why we call it as a multi phase system. So, you could be having a gaseous phase which is not only air, it could be the saturated gases or different type of gases which are available in the geo environment. I will discuss quite in details of these issues in today's discussion. Then under extreme pressure and temperature conditions, it might so happen that the liquid phase which is present might crystallize, might form you know uh, the crystals of ice. This part I have discussed in the one of the lectures and this is where the gases might get trapped and a multi phase geomaterial matrix might get formed. Now very commonly we call this as a ice like structure or a clathrate. So, gas hydrates are nothing but ice like structures, clathrates and these clathrates contain gases, solid phase that is the sediments, then fluid phase which is the pore solution and it could be in the liquid phase or it could be the gaseous phase also under extreme temperature and pressure conditions. So, let us consider uh, the offshore environment and that is the reason I was asking you that anybody who has done this courses on offshore engineering or not. One part of geotechnical engineering or one sub 
subject of the geotechnical engineering is offshore engineering, offshore geotechnical engineering, where we deal with sediments which are lying in the offshore environment. Uh, there are companies mostly dealing with oil and petroleum gases or products which are more interested in offshore geotechnical engineering because I hope you can understand that these type of structures are not being executed onshore. So, hence the environments are quite extreme in terms of the forces which are going to act on the system and their severity. And second thing is the type of sediments which are available. So, most of the time these sediments are uh, offshore sediments clays, very soft sensitive clays and hence construction in such type of deposits becomes very, very difficult. So, it so happens that the gas hydrates are mostly uh, located in the marine environment. This could be lakes, this could be oceans, this could be you know old river deposits, uh, are, these are the locations where mostly you will find the gas hydrates. So, we call them as the marine environment. And the beauty is as I said some time back that each molecule of the hydrate is going to have a tremendous amount of uh, methane trapped in it. And uh, there is a simple gas law which most of you must have studied in your undergraduate or maybe 10 plus 2 uh, where we say P into V equal to N into RT. So, if I have to pack number of moles of a gas in a matrix the tools which are available to play with would be pressure and temperature to you know in case certain volume of a gas and through which I can count the number of moles. So, this is the story about it. Now, what I have shown here is a typical continental margin. So, somewhere here this side is known as onshore and as we go in the deeper environment this becomes offshore environment. Now, what happens here is uh, this is how the gas hydrates look like. Uh, maybe subsequently in one of the lectures I will show you the hydrates which we are handling with and uh, they just look like the dry ice, a dirty ice and uh, the moment you bring them to the natural environment they dissociate and the methane goes out of it. So, this is where the challenge is how to synthesize this type of structure in the laboratory and why this should be done because unless I synthesize these type of structures in the sediments in the laboratory, I cannot estimate their engineering properties. And engineering properties I think we have discussed quite in details would be uh, their strength mostly. So, there could be different types of gases which might be forming hydrates. The most common and the most essential one is methane gas uh, that is CH4. And now what is the genesis of the methane gas? I am sure you must be aware of that uh, when we go into the deep environment, uh, this is where the formation of the gases is because of thermo processes. We call these gases as thermogenic. That means their genesis is because of thermal processes. So, thermal decomposition of the organic matter is responsible for formation of these type of gases. So, I hope you can recognize very easily CH4 is methane, C2H6 is which one? Ethane and then we have C3H8 propane all right. So, these are the combination of the gases out of which I would love to have CH4 which is almost more than 90 percent purity then I can use this as a fuel. So, imagine what I like to do, I like to connect the reservoir of the methane gas hydrates with the pipes in such a manner that the mom moment I dissociate the system over here, the entire gas comes to the utility. This is the best possible situation which I would love to have. Now, most of the time uh, the chemistry of the system is also very much important in creating thermogenic gases. I hope you can realize that this type of situation is quite new to geotechnical engineering profession. 
because we have never talked about the migration of the gases which we have been discussing in the last lecture. Uh, we, we never talked about the conductivity of the gases through sediments. Normally what we talk about is the hydraulic conductivity and then we do lot of experiments to find out uh, you know what is the permeability of the system if the porous structure is known. Now in this situation uh, the problem becomes more complicated. I would like to know what is the conductivity of the gas molecules through the sediments. So fortunately these type of studies my students have already taken up and we have been able to publish this in good journals. So those of you who are really very much eager to know uh, how the whole mechanism is, what type of setups were developed, how the interpretation of the results was done. Uh, you are most welcome to read the papers which are published by uh, Dr. Jeevan and Sayam. I mean these are the guys who have done most of the work in this area. So we started everything from the ab initio. We developed setups for passing the gases through uh, you know through the sediments at different environmental conditions, pressure and temperature and we use different types of gases. Now the situation is like this that we want to study uh, the a big matrix of the sediments and the gases and environmental conditions. So different type of sediments, let us say clays of different types mineralogy, sands of different type mineralogy, then the gases of different types, different types of chemical reactivity. So I could be having a gas which is inert. All right, like helium or nitrogen. At the same time, I will also like to study the migration of methane gas, ethane gas, all right, propane gas through these type of sediments so that I can design my systems better. Now, this is going to be a huge matrix to work with. So, type of gases, their reactivity the type of sediments because each location where these type of deposits are, these sediments are of different types, all right. So somewhere you have sandy deposits, somewhere you have uh, mostly clays and so on. So nature is not uniform. And then of course the type of pressure and temperature conditions which exist beneath the seabed. So that would depend upon the water column, height of the water column and the location of the reservoir in the seabed. So, P T changes, pressure temperature changes, sediments type changes, their pore structure changes, the type of pore solutions which are present in these type of met, uh, sediments is changing, the type of gases are changing. So, it is a big exercise. I hope you realize that uh, you cannot conduct falling head permeometer test and constant head permeometer test, permeometer test for, for obtaining these type of uh, answers to the problem. So, you have to devise something different. Now, when you come on the shallow side of the offshore, uh, this is what is known as biogenic process. So biogenic process is mostly because of the bacterial or microbial process, all right. That is the difference between microbially generated gases and thermogenic gases. Thermogenic gases are mostly because of geological features at a very large scale. Microbial decomposition of the marine sediments occurs because of the organic matter which is getting decomposed and these type of gases develop. Now the difference between thermogenic and biogenic process is when we talk about biogenic process it is mostly the methane gas which is normally dealt with because decomposition of any organic matter would result in methane formation, all right. Now I am sure now you must be realizing that this is the first time you are hearing these type of terms in civil engineering and geotechnical engineering, decomposition of organic matter, all right. And until now we never bothered about the organic matter itself. For us the soil was something which was very inert. We, we never tried to understand what is the organic content in this. But I am sure if you revisit the hydrometer test which you have done, I am sure all of you must have conducted hydrometer test and uh, you treated the soil to get rid of the organic content, ferric components, all right and different type of uh, contaminants which are present in the soils. You, you know how to filter them out 
So, if you treat the soil with H2O2, you are getting rid of the organic matter and then you start doing your particle size analysis. So, that was a very crude way of finding out the organic matter in the soils. But nowadays, with the advent of a lot of interesting and very intricate tools, the organic matter in materials or geomaterials can be obtained very, very precisely. One of the equipments which is used for this is TOC analyzer, total organic carbon analyzer. So, I hope you understand if I know the total organic carbon present in the sediments, I can estimate what would be the amount of biogenic methane gas it would exhibit after decomposition, clear. But decomposition is a new word. This is not we have dealt with earlier because until now we have been talking about the control volumes. Now, the volumes do not remain controlled, they distort the sediments are distorting, their volumes are changing and when decomposition occurs, I hope you realize that there will be some amount of solid phase which will be remaining unless the decomposition 100 percent. There would be some amount of the gaseous phase which might get generated and there would be some amount of liquid phase which will also get generated, all right. So, this is what decomposition is. So, this is a very new term in geomechanics environmental geotechnics, decomposition of the material. So, most of the universities and the professors and the labs are working to master decomposition of sediments, materials and I hope you understand the reason. Suppose if I give you an exercise, find out what is the you know volume of methane gas which is which might be present in the system, in the submarine system so that I can harness it. Tomorrow I have to plan a complete network of pipe system so that I can dissociate the gas and I can use it for my purpose. So, that means you have to do complete profiling of the entire offshore region to understand what is the potential of the sediments to generate uh, biogenic or thermogenic gases. It is a big commercial activity, all right. Another good example of uh, decomposition in geomechanics would be municipal solid waste. So, I am sure you must have studied about it. I will discuss again in details about the MSW and the way you would like to handle this, store this, disintegrate this. Because in today's philosophy, uh, the municipal solid waste could also be a potential source of energy generation. I think we have discussed this point. So, I do not want anything to happen uncontrolled, all right. I would treat the whole municipal solid waste landfill as a reactor, provided I have designed it like that. So, need of the hour is to design the MSW landfills also as a reactor and I can change the kinetics of the reaction which is occurring in them. So, one of these types of reactors is a bioreactor landfill, which is a very latest thing uh, in the subject. Mm -hmm.